share the link so you can actually watch it live and we should be good to go. Is it live? Yeah. Are you sure? Because mm -hmm. I can see live. Good, I've got the live video now. So I'm just going to send that to all of you. YouTube live video so you can now watch on YouTube as well so when we ask you to go on YouTube you can literally just go on YouTube so I recommend you go on YouTube now if you don't mind so if you go on YouTube now so and also confirm that you can see us on YouTube I'll close that now so confirm you can actually see me on YouTube please Wait a minute, so I just need to close a few screens down so it says that muted okay just bear with me a second all right you can back away so now you should be able to hear me so are we good guys are we good so you should be able to see me on youtube and you should be able to see me on you should be able to hear me on webinar you should, you should see my screen and hear me on webinar and you should be able to see me on youtube can we confirm that please if you don't mind i really appreciate it if you can confirm that Okay, so YouTube, YouTube check, webinar check, hear me, hear and see me check. All right, just confirm that, guys, and then I can kick off. Please, because I don't want to get started and then all of a sudden no one can see me. Okay, cool, excellent. All right, so now let us quickly start off. Good, thank you very much. Uh, don't worry, you're new, so interaction is always a bit slow. The moment we all start talking, don't worry, you will, um, people will stop being shy and everyone will start talking. Now, uh, I sent you something earlier. Every single month, um, every single month by the second week of the month, we tend to take a record of all our success stories and then we send it to you because it's always so easy to overlook the fact that we literally get around 30 people securing a job every single month. It is um, incredible, it's unbelievable. Uh, we've now started helping people in Nigeria also secure a job. So if you notice, it's been very difficult to speak to me because I'm also uh, well, I'm at our, our hub in Nigeria. So right now, you're, right now, you're actually talking to me at our hub in Nigeria. So if I can just turn this quickly, uh, so just bear with me a second, just make sure that the wheels are clearly, okay, good. So that's all right. Now just make it straight. Now, so you should be able to see me now on YouTube, okay? And there you go. So you should be able to see me on YouTube right now. So I'm just going to get on the screen and then you should be able to see me, okay? So now from my understanding, there are only three of you on YouTube which means that you would not, you might miss out on a few things. So, um, and what I don't want to do is be talking and then you're not uh, or concentrating on YouTube. So remember, go to the Telegram group. If you're on the Telegram group, you will have the link. The YouTube link is there. So I'll just post that again for you so you can see it. Okay. All right. For visual experience, uh, watch on YouTube as well. Okay. So that you have that now sent to you twice. And then on the webinar, just to make sure, I'll send it as a chat. So that way I feel that I've covered everyone. And I mean, if you're, if you're, if you, most of you will have, if you're watching me from a computer, you will definitely have YouTube. So I'll send that to everybody as well. Now, so if I can continue with what I was saying, in the UK, in, um, um, we're over here in the hub over here in Nigeria. And we are also helping people to secure jobs. Recently, someone got a job as a business analyst the moment they landed in 
um, Canada within 28 days of securing that job. When you join the platform, you will actually meet these people. They're amazing people. So um, right now, you guys are on November group, as you can see, like so. However, when you join us officially, you will now join the 1,532 strong um, um, alumni and candidates like yourself. Now, um, we're, we're like a happy family over here. So today, our head of technology, you know, has birthday is today. So um, our daughter's birthday is today. So we're kind of celebrating that. That's exciting for everybody. Everyone's really happy about that. All the meetings that we have are there. Any application for any roles, project management or business analysis roles, are also posted there as well. Um, the awards, for example, was posted uh, earlier today. I think I sent that over to you. So all the people that have been shortlisted for the awards, um, all the people that secured jobs, success stories are also posted as well, which is good. So if you notice on your group, very people congratulate people when they tell you that someone has gotten a job because you don't know who they are. But over here, they know who they are, so they always congratulate those people. So it's an ecosystem that is treated as a family and we help each other out. If you read our success stories, you'll see that somebody is always thanking somebody. So it's not just about the training that you're coming for, it's about the work experience, it's about the mentoring and the massive support you are going to get. And as long as you're committed and you get your hands dirty, then you will most, most definitely be successful. However, it is absolutely critical that you are committed Without commitment, you cannot succeed. Now, you will have been told, when you join us, you will have been told to take a personality test. It is absolutely critical that you do that because that personality test is one of the most important things you need to do when you join us because it helps you discover which role suits you best and more importantly, it helps you discover what you should specialize in. You don't want to come here and spend six months, nine months, and not know what you want to do. You want to come here day one, know what you should specialize in, and three months later, you're applying for work and you secure a job and you share your success story with us. Now, before I go any further, I think it would be good for you to throw any questions at me, but I'll give you the agenda for today. So what we're going to do is I will explain how the platform works. I will explain our methodology to you. I will explain what project management means, what business analysis means, what digital means, and how it is how you can actually break into the digital world and start earning the kind of salaries our candidates are earning, and how you can gain the experience to do it. And then we'll then look at your personality test uh, as well. And then we can then review, expand on that when we now meet on Sunday. So remember, you're here today, and then also you're going to be here on Sunday. I hope it makes sense. So that said, can you do me a favor? If you have any questions, you can feel just raise your hands up, and I can. Um, um, I sent the link. So somebody said, uh, Kenneth, you said, uh, what do I do? Uh, search. No, I sent the link to you. So if you look at the Telegram group on your group, the link has been sent. Just click on that link, and I've also sent it as a chat to you on webinar. Just click on that link. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to search for it. The link has been sent to you. So that said, um, if you have any questions before I get started, feel free to ask. Um, you can raise your hand up and I will mute you. Uh, you can talk. If you're shy, just type in the question box. I can see it. Type in Telegram. I can see it. And then I will respond to you accordingly. Okay? So somebody said, yes, I sent that in this before. Send the link. So sorry. Okay, good. So Kenny is good. So any questions? If you don't have any questions, just tell me to carry on. And then I will carry on. So remember, you have two options. You can watch me on YouTube over here. Or you can watch. And, well, actually, you it's, it's not really two options. You can, when it's time to go on YouTube, I go on YouTube, and then when it's time to use the webinar, I use the webinar. So you can kind of mute the um, um, the speaker uh, on or the sound on your uh, YouTube for now while you listen to me on the webinar. And when it's time to go to YouTube, you mute yourself on the webinar and then go to the um, to, um, to YouTube. So any questions? No questions. Just say carry on. One person, I tell you, three people need to say carry on and I carry on, okay? So that's that. If you're not responding, it tells me that you don't know how to use the platform. And then that worries me very, very much. Okay, so good. Uh, two people have said carry on. I just need one more person to say, actually, we've got, good, I've got, I've got it. So now I can carry on. Thank you very much, guys. I like the interaction. So now I can carry on. Okay, good. So first of all, let us talk about um, why you, are here, why you have registered. You've registered because you've seen um, a success story or you've heard of somebody who um, have gotten a job and you're coming on the platform and you want to build your career. You obviously want to um, establish uh, a, a digital skill set that enables you to earn the same kind of money that those kind of people are earning. 
But the question is, what is digital all about? So somebody said, my first time hearing that the sound, it can, it, it's hearing the sound, it can't see our facilitator. Sorry, George, it's hard to understand what your question is. So please rewrite the question again in a way that I can understand it. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'll just continue again. So, um, um, so, so the question is, what is digital all about? And that is very important. Now, if you've been attending any of the um, sponsor meetings I've been having, you will notice that I have explained what that is. But if you haven't, I'm more than happy to take you through it all over again. So remember, recapping, I'm going to take you through digital. I'm going to take you through uh, project management. I'm going to take you through business analysis. I'm going to take you through the framework as a whole, our PMO office, and then we'll look at which role suits you best. So I think that's a good way to go. If you have any suggestions, feel free to tell me about them, and then I will be able to come back to you. I'm going to answer those questions accordingly. So I'm going to close the question box now so I can kick off. Now, first of all, let me introduce myself to you, because I think that is important. And um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to make this and put this in presentation mode. The reason I need to put it in presentation mode is so that you can see the screen. Uh, if not, you won't be able to see the screen. Actually, sometimes the webinar goes off, so I will just leave it like this if you don't mind. Now, who am I? My name is Keiji Giwa. I'm the founder and the CEO of Digital Bananas Technology. Um, most will consider me as a digital technology strategist or a digital business transformation solutions architect. I have a computer science degree from um, Kingston University and a master's in digital marketing, which I am about to finalize. I've not actually finalized it yet. I have uh, one dissertation to actually submit, but I had to postpone it. Uh, the reason I had to postpone it is because I had to set up the hub over here in Nigeria and I just didn't have time for it. Now, I've been in this space going, I think, close to 20 years now, and it is over, it's over um, 16, I think probably about 17 years. And um, I've seen it evolve from when it was just creating a website um, to literally having massive online solutions, digital solutions that we have right now. And I've seen analog technology become digital technology. So when we talk about analog technology, what do I mean by that? Well, analog technology talks about um, um, talks about kind of uses radio frequencies. So remember the radios used to have in those days like the tune and stuff like that? Uh, that's using radio frequency, analog technology. And then over time, we said to digitize everything. So digitization is electronic technology that create, that, uh, that, um, um, that creates processes and literally transforms data. And I think I will, I will show you the definition of that very, very soon. So what's the best way to explain digital technology? Just imagine the fact that now you can easily send an email to somebody electronically. That's why it's called email. I can pay for something online, uh, electronic payments. I can um, uh, listen to videos online, e-learning, electronic learning, okay? So that's digital. That's what digital is. It's electronic technology. And electronic technology has helped businesses improve their overall um, um, uh, processes, has helped them to be a lot more efficient, has helped them to reach more customers, and as more importantly, it has helped them to drive down operational costs. So as a result, companies are always looking to invest in technology. So in business today, technology is more like a business enabler. It's meant to enable the business to stay competitive, to be a lot more customer centric, and more importantly, uh, to drive down operational costs and and, and have uh, uh, and be more uh, efficient in terms of um, 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 their business activities. So that's basically how that is, that what digital technology is all about. And the act of a business using technology to enhance every area of their businesses, processes, and models or business model is what you call digital transformation. Okay, so and I and what I want to do every time I explain something, I want you to confirm to me that you understand it and it is clear. So once again, I will look at the chat area. I will not rush. I will be 
be as slow as I can. If I'm speaking French, just just type French, French, hey, French, French. Okay, so the moment I speak French, just just bombard me with French and I will stop. The word French and then I will stop and explain. But if you feel that you understand what I'm saying, just type understood and then I will move on to the next stage. So I'm waiting for you to let me know that you understand. And if you don't understand, ask a question. Do not be shy. Like I said, you can raise your hand up and I will come to you. If you don't raise your hand up you can, and you're shy, just type and I will look at that. So I see that two people understand. So can I at least have a few other people say I understand so that at least I feel like everyone is involved. Thank you very much. Good. All right. So there's clarity in that area and I can now move on to the next step. Now, once again, feel free to raise your hand up so I can actually come to you. So I'll just look and see quickly and if anyone has actually raised their hands. And if anybody has, then I will come to you. Now, I see Christian, you have raised your hand. If you have not raised your hand, just mute yourself when I unmute you. So, Christina, I have unmuted you. Um, Deji, you have raised your hand. I have unmuted you. Once again, if you have not raised your hand, just unmute yourself uh, so that we don't get noise in your background, okay? So now, um, Christina and Deji, you can ask questions anytime you want. Uh, Abidemi, I have unmuted you. So once again, um, unless you have a question, just unmute you. Just mute yourself. If not, when you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask that question. So Abidemi, okay, so good. So so far, only three people raised their hands up, but they don't have a question yet. So that's good. Now let me carry on. Now let's now come to what we need to look at in terms of the term digital. So I've already explained this to you, but I'll explain this to you based on the slide I have over here. So digital describes electronic technology that generates, stores, and processes data in terms of two states, positive and non-positive. Now, I don't want to bore you with the technical terms right now. In simple English, it's basically the ability to generate, data, generate store, and process data. And data can be in the form of images, it can be in the form of videos, and it can also be in the form of words or and, and, and they're represented by zeros and ones so by me being able to digitize images words and um video i can watch youtube as long as i have data access as long as i have internet access why because it's electronic transmission of data i can send an email as long as i have electronic access i can view a website i can um i can stream on netflix as long as i have electronic access and that is the beauty and benefit of digital and when you think about it from that perspective why is it so important to people why are we now living in the digital age now i want you and this is where i just want to take my time and go back into the past you know let's kind of go back into time i don't know if you guys remember netflix i use this every single time as well i don't know if you guys remember blockbusters i use this every single time as an example um can you probably focus on the screen on there please so if you look over here you would see blockbusters this is a movie rental company now guess what Guys, Blockbusters used to be the number one movie rental um, company in the entire world. You know, it was unbelievable. You will walk down the street and you will find a Blockbusters. You couldn't go anywhere without finding a Blockbusters. Do you all remember this? Let's just confirm that I'm speaking to people who are profi around the same age as me, or at least young enough to have seen a Blockbuster once in their life. Okay, so is that correct? You've seen Blockbusters once in your life? Or have you actually rented a movie from Blockbusters? Do you ever remember renting a movie from Blockbusters? Good, so some of you have rented a movie from Blockbusters. Wonderful. Okay, now what on earth happened to them? Why on earth are we not able to go down the street and literally find a Blockbuster and rent movies from them? Why? What's going on? Blockbusters was the biggest movie um, uh, rental company in the world. What on earth happened to them? Well, I'm going to tell you, and I think you can take a guess, I, they failed to evolve. That's what happened to them. They literally failed to evolve. While people were, while, while other businesses were taking advantage of the digital um, uh, um, age that we were moving into, Blockbusters were sitting there just trying to, to thinking that, you know what, people, people love to sit down and watch movies at home, so nobody's going to come and rent a, um, and watch movies online, or nobody's going to come and um, yeah, nobody's going to come and watch movies online and then the technology wasn't that great in terms of streaming so basically they just felt, you know what, 
it's not gonna it's not they, they didn't have the 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 hindsight they didn't have the foresight to sit down and say you know what where are we going to be in five years time and what should we be taking advantage of and this is where you come in this is where companies are now so scared that advancing technologies or we will say disruptive companies are using they are, they are taking advantage of digital technology and using it to their advantage they are actually using it to gain competitive advantage and literally um shutting down other businesses that are failing to evolve so whether you like it or not as a business you actually can't just say that you are not going to evolve you can't say that because if you decide that you're not going to evolve then guess what you will eventually lose customers to those that are evolving now really and truly why is it that blockbusters can say we are not going to evolve and not still keep their customers well the problem was the fact that once upon a time technology was really being used by the military and really being used by the government once upon a time. That was literally what was happening. But today, that technology is widely now being used. I am hot. I don't know if you can saw this AC out. Yeah. Right now, but these days, that technology is widely being used by the everyday user. If you think about it, just in Nigeria alone, mobile accounts for 70, um, mobile internet penetration accounts for 76% of the population. 76% of the population are connected on mobile. And after that 76%, 30% have smartphones. 30%, that is a lot, and that is growing. That will, be, um, that will grow to 25% by 2020. So if your business is not integrating into the lifestyle of the user through the medium he's using, then what on earth is going to happen to your business? Well, you're not able to get in touch with your customers. You're not even able to connect with your customers. You eventually lose your customers. And this is why every business is taking advantage of the digital mediums available to them because even their customers are a lot more savvy than the company themselves. So the company has to be savvy. So what happened here was that while Blockbuster's customers were becoming digitally savvy, Blockbuster's chose not to be digitally savvy. And as a result, a company came up and said, hey, to you digitally savvy people, Guess what? I know you have internet access. I know you can stream movies online. Well, you don't need to go to Blockbusters and pay $4.99 to, or $5.99 or sometimes $10.99 to watch the latest movies. You can just, um, just watch one movie, by the way. You can actually pay $5.99 a month and you can watch as many movies as you want. So guess what? True digitization. What company was that? What company was able to literally offer a better business proposition or customer uh, proposition, uh, sorry, business proposition to their customers. So I don't, I don't see if you guys can take a guess. Anybody take a guess? Let's make this as interactive. Good, one person has got it right, only one person. Come on guys, somebody else must be able to have an answer to give me here. Somebody else? Okay, one person only, two, okay, one person on, um, what do you call it? Okay, and another person, okay, two people now. All right, well, guess what? Um, yeah, Amazon, but actually, before Amazon, it was called Love Film. So, I don't know if you guys remember Love Film. Love Film, at that point in time, you see, now this is where I want you to come on YouTube. So, please, guys, go on YouTube and look at what I'm going to do on the board. Okay? Now, if you're not able to get the link on YouTube, just listen to me. But I really hope that you can go on YouTube and actually pay attention to what I'm going to do on the board right now. Okay? Um, good. Just, just turn it. I'd rather you turn it because if the chair. Uh, but okay, it stops being straight. Okay, so now check this out. I'm gonna draw a line here. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line here, and I'm actually just going to do this. And let us look at this as the age of limitation. I'm gonna look at this as the age of unlimited accessibility. Okay. So, in the age, during the age of limitation, we use video cassettes. Why? Because it was limited to do that video cassette was limited to whatever minutes you could put on that video cassette. We had um, tape cassettes. We had internet access. We had limited <laughs> internet access, which would go as high as. I think it was maybe 56k, I uh, can't remember what it was at that point in time actually. Then we had CDs, <laughs> we had DVDs, you know? So 
if you think about that, those were the age of limitation. And in the age of limitation, businesses built their strategy based on limitation. Their entire business model was based on limitation. So they would come up with their strategy, they would come up with their business model, their entire operations would be based on limitation. So look at this here as blockbusters. So blockbusters are well, and then imagine customers, then this is the customers. So these customers here, so there you go, so customers. Let me try and do that like that, okay? Now these customers who were limited we're happy to go into Blockbusters, rent a movie, return it two days later, and then if you return it late, you get it fine. But as time went on, these same customers were beginning to take advantage of digital technology which was now made available to them. Okay? So you now had these guys all of a sudden having access to the internet. Okay? And by having access to the internet, Instead of blockbusters evolving and catering to these new age customers, we call the digital customers, they focused on their business model and lost sight of the fact that their customers were moving over here. Okay? Then all of a sudden, a company called Love Film, and I, will, I think I'll just do this so that it represents online, that had access to, that created an online business, and their online business, their business model was, you know what, while we still, in fact, let me do this, this is actually better. I think there is what we call the mid age, the, the middle age of, um, and I'll put Love Film here. And here, Love Film, okay, was still limited, but beginning to tap into the age of unlimited accessibility, but still limited. And they noticed that key customers were moving to this area as well. So let's put the customers, let's put those customers here. So the customer here. Now, this customer had access to the internet. Well, how about we get as many movies as we can, put them on DVDs, but allow customers to rent them online, and then they can rent as many as they want, but then they only, um, uh, it's only when they return what they have rented that they get the next one and will charge a very small fee per month. So as a result of internet technology, as a result of digital technology, they were able to drive down the cost, the amount that they charge the customer, making it affordable and creating value for that customer, but still allowing that customer to sit at home and watch the same movies that they would watch on their TV. Why? Because at that point, we didn't have unlimited access, internet access, okay? Then, we now realize that there was unlimited internet access and these guys were so digitally savvy that they were beginning to stream movies online. Then Netflix came into place. Okay? And Netflix said, you know what? Forget about us selling you CDs. We can put all, because we are now living in the age of unlimited accessibility, we can put all of the movies online. And since you have unlimited internet access, you can stream any movie as much as you want. And by the way, it is just £4.99 which literally destroyed Love Film. They eventually bankrupted Blockbusters because they failed to evolve. Because they could, Blockbusters, could, look, Blockbusters was a very strong brand name. They could literally have done the same thing, but they just kept on staying in the past. All of a sudden, you have beautiful Netflix, now today, making billions of dollars a year and having millions of subscribers. Their digital transformation strategy is phenomenal. You need to go online and read it. And they're very much looking at making sure that um, um, in terms of their objective, speed, accessibility, uh, content, you know, and um, I forgot what it was, at, at the heart of everything that they do. So this is the consequences of literally not digital transforming. But what do you think happened to the guys that were working for blockbusters? Okay, because they did not build their digital skills, they most likely became unemployed when blockbusters were bankrupt. While some that built their digital skills looked to work for companies that were now digitally savvy, you know, so or that were, not, that were now having a digital strategy. So I think I hope you understand the benefit of digital technology, the benefit of creating a digital strategy and literally looking at your business and saying that, look, we need to transform and become either a digital player 
or uh, become a digital disruptor, but at least become a digital explorer first. I hope it makes sense, rather than being a digital resistor. <laughs> okay, so that's I hope that kind of makes a lot of sense. And now, imagine this. Imagine that companies looked at what happened to Blockbusters, looked at what happened to Kodak, looked at what happened to Motorola, and felt, we don't want that happening to us. Then they now had to look at the digital capabilities out there that enable them to further integrate into their customer's lifestyle, and more importantly, enable them to gain more market share and be a lot more customer-centric. That will now mean that they would have to and if I can just put that off, clean that off. That will now mean that they would have to come up with a number of, no, I know this is supposed to be a light bulb. <laughs> so it means I'm not very good with art, but that means they would have to come up with a number of ideas, true concepts. By what? Looking at the digital, capabilities available to them. And for them to look at the digital capabilities available to them, what do they have to do? They have to explore emerging digital technologies and understand the benefits they add to the body, to the business. Then that same business will have to say all these ideas, all these capabilities, how does it help us to be more customer centric? How does it help us to be more, to improve our operational efficiency? How does it help us to create new business models? In all, or in all, all of these are leading to two things. Um, cost optimization true efficiency and that leads to digitization yeah or digitization leads to efficiency or revenue generation true revenue levers which obviously is enhanced through digitization as well. So kind of look at it, so this is what the business is now thinking about. As a result, they come up with a few strategies and they realize that, oh my God, we have to digitize, we have to automate, we have to um, 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 take advantage of data, we need to use this and that and that. Then they end up with a massive portfolio. So I'll just take this off. Then they end up with a massive portfolio, okay? And that massive portfolio, okay, so let's just say that this is company A's portfolio, and that portfolio is broken down into programs. So this program will achieve this. This other program will achieve this. This other program will achieve this. Let's just leave it three for now. So maybe one program is focusing on helping them to be customer-centric. Another program is helping them to improve their operational efficiency. Another program is helping them to improve their overall business model. So that pro this program, the reason why it's a program is because projects, multiple projects become a program. So a program is, um, um, when a project is too big, it has to be broken into smaller projects, it becomes a program. So you will find that when it comes to custom, being customer centric, well, we need to first of all do um, integrate all of our systems together so that we have a unified system and customers are actually, and we, we kind of have information about our customers regardless of what channel we're using. That's one big project we have to work. We need to improve our overall website and improve the user experience. That is another project. We need to um, um, be more, have a mobile stra first strategy, which means that we should create an app for our website. That becomes another project. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. Then in terms of um, uh, when they're talking about operational efficiency, 
they can say that, okay, you know what, right now, we need to find a way to make sure that our staff can kind of walk, um, um, uh, uh, kind of walk anywhere, anytime. So how can we allow for collaboration and knowledge sharing? So that will lead to a major project on that. And then, oh, by the way, we need our customers to be able to kind of walk anywhere in the world, uh, walk on the move. So how do we have a mobile strategy for that? That will lead to another project as well. And the same thing will be, will be, the, same, will be the same thing for um, looking at the business model. So you can now see that these programs have portfolios of projects, but all of these programs are aimed at helping the business achieve its digital transformation initiative. So what does this now mean? Well, guess what? They will need a PMO, a PMO, a digital program office, and it will be important to make sure that the program office is somebody that understands digital <laughs> and understands the value of digital. So all of a sudden, if you are a project manager with a, a, pro, a, a program manager or a program director with no knowledge of the digital age that we live in, you cannot add value. Then you're made redundant. Then companies start recruiting for digital experts. Same thing will go for the program manager because if the digital um, uh, that, um, program office director who is digitally savvy has understands what needs to be implemented he needs his program managers to be digitally savvy as well program managers will need their project managers to be digitally savvy as well now the people who are going to implement the work so they're going to analyze translate and communicate so business analysts are people who analyze translate and communicate analyze why we should do something analyze how it's going to be done and then Translate it from business requirements into technical requirements and communicate it back and forth until it's implemented. That's the BA's job. The project manager's job is to manage, monitor, control the budget, timeline, resources, and benefits associated to that project that he's managing in order for him to execute it successfully. The program manager manages the portfolio of projects and then the program director is literally basically they manage the chaos they, they, they manage chaos they manage the benefits they manage the processes they manage basically the delivery successful delivery of the initiative or the digital transformation initiative so do you now understand why if you don't have any digital skill right now we live in the digital age the reason we are living in the digital age is because the customers you are a digital customer you are the reason why companies have to have a digital first strategy because even right now most of you are watching me from your mobile phone some of you are watching me from your laptop some of you are watching me from your desktop some of you who are watching on youtube might be watching this on your big screen so i have i as a business, as a business have to cater to you the multi-screen user if i only say that my office is in lagos or my office is in, a, is in um, our office in Greenwich, and you cannot come there, I have lost you as a customer. But the fact that I can integrate into your lifestyle, as a result of taking advantage of digital mediums like YouTube, which is a digital channel, as a result of taking advantage of webinar, which is a communication channel, as a result of taking advantage of Microsoft PowerPoint, which enables me to present to you. You can talk to me, and I can talk to you anywhere in the world. You can actually experience a proper lecture, and guess what? I'm in Nigeria right now. While most of you right now, in fact, 100% of you right now, are watching this from the United Kingdom. So let's take a test. Let's come back, come back to the uh, webinar. So, and this is really interesting. So looking at, looking at watching me from two screens, actually, which is pretty awesome. So let's come back over here. And um, okay, let's come back over here. So Najim, I will unmute you. The, uh, when you come in, you're automatically unmuted. So we will talk to you um, later on. So I just want us to be as interactive as possible. Okay. And uh, so Najim, unless you have something to say, mute yourself for now, please. And then we'll come back to you later. Okay, please mute yourself or I'll have to mute you, please. There's an option that gives you the opportunity to mute yourself. Now, notice this, guys. This is very important. Now, let's have a quick survey. How many of you are watching me from your mobile phone? If you're watching me from your mobile phone, just type mobile. If you're watching me from your desktop, type desktop. If you're watching me from your YouTube TV, your smart TV, type smart TV. 
Let's have let's just understand the variety of people that are taking advantage of this platform now just to prove that you are actual digital customers. So the first person is mobile. Okay, so some one person has said mobile, somebody said iPad, somebody said smart TV, pretty impressive. So you're confirming everything I've just told you. Someone said desktop, okay? Anybody else? Somebody said iPad, alright? Another person said iPad, another person said laptop, another person said mobile, another person said go on. Uh, mobile and laptop. So look, 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 look. I love Ro Roland. You're, you're, you're the perfect customer. Roland is what you call the multi-screen user. Roland is has got me on mobile. He has got me on laptop, and he probably has that because he's watching me on YouTube and he's watching me on his. He's watching the webinar, so he has the webinar for the um, uh, training experience, and he has the YouTube for the visual experience, which is pretty awesome, isn't it? You know. Now imagine that. 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you couldn't do this. You would actually have to go down to the training center. And imagine that I literally couldn't, if this technology wasn't there, there's no way I could be running the business over here in Nigeria and still be, be, still be available to you in the UK. And that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Now let's try something else out. Let's look at the fact that digital helps you reach more customers than that you initially could, could reach. Where are you guys calling from? Are you calling from London? Are you calling from Manchester? Are you calling from... Um, um, where, where are you calling from? So, Roland is London. Anybody else? London, Cambridge, Colchester. I can see Colchester. I see London again. Come on, guys. Birmingham, okay. Hertfordshire, Northamptonshire. North Hampshire. Okay, Somerset, Watford, London, so we have a lot of Londoners. But that doesn't also change the fact that while we have a lot of Londoners, we also have people from all over um, um, the UK, Coventry, okay? So guess what? Imagine if I had to serve you guys, you are either going to have to drive all the way down to our London office or come and meet me in Nigeria if you're that desperate, or I will have to set up offices there. But guess what? You don't need to do that. And you know what's even better? You are doing this from the convenience of your home. Right now, I believe that you're multitasking. Now, we men are not good at multitasking, which means I can guarantee that majority of the people that are multitasking are women. But guess what? Some of them, us men are probably good at it as well. So, what are you? Are there some of you that are doing something at the same time as actually listening to this session? So just let me know. So for example, I'm cook. Oh, you know what? It's quite cool. Someone is cooking their dinner. So um, I mean, someone, someone is watching football. I don't even know how you can do that. <laughs> you know. So basically, we're, we're able to multitask while we are actually learning and, and at the same time. Somebody said cooking exactly, and isn't that awesome? And that is the someone is cooking. In fact, most people are cooking because guess what? It's eight forty-eight. Um, at night, somebody said, just finished the lecture, you know? So that's the beauty, that's the beauty of digitization. The fact that digital technology literally enables you, can literally enable you to get on with your life while your uh, businesses can still integrate into your life. Somebody said babysitting. Somebody said carrying my baby and making him sleep while you're learning at the same time, which is pretty awesome. So do you now see the value of digitization? And do you not see why businesses are so desperate to go through a digital transformation strategy and make sure that they stay competitive? But even more important, do you see why literally you are the digital customer? Can I confirm that you do? Okay, so what does that now tell us? Well, it tells us that anybody that's going to manage these massive portfolios of projects or analyze these massive portfolios of projects must have the right digital skill and must have the right digital expertise. So just being a project manager, just being a business analyst won't get you a job anymore. Having the digital skills for you to manage digital projects will get you a job. And that's why companies are looking for digital BAs and companies are looking for digital PMs. Okay? And there are more roles beyond that. For example, you're, you have roles that are focused on GDPR because the more we're collecting data as a result of being uh, more digitally focused or becoming a digital business, what happens is that there are laws in place to regulate how we manage and use 
that data, as you can see. So that's why GDPR project managers and GDPR BAs are um, highly sought after. Then you have big data. Uh, companies that need to understand the insights in their data as they gather data from a variety of sources as they realize that they have millions of customer data and they can link that customer data with millions of other data and they need to analyze that data and visualize that data to make better decisions and then you have digital marketing the fact that companies don't can, can this can extend their marketing reach and gain more insights from their marketing uh, campaigns by using digital mediums like Facebook, like Google, so digital digital channels like social, mobile, um, search, <coughs> sorry, display, and take advantage of an analytics to be able to understand the insights they can get from that. So the question now is, do you have those skills? And if you don't, then that is what we're going to focus on building. And that's why we have the highest number of success stories anywhere. I don't know, you know, I, always, I don't like to claim the entire world because there might be somebody doing what I'm doing in another country. But I know for a fact that in the United Kingdom, nobody gets the kind of success stories that we get. And the reason being is because we make sure you have the right skills and expertise for you to be able to compete and gain a competitive advantage over those with years of experience because they just don't have the skills that we have. Okay, so which is the benefit for you? Um, sorry, uh, okay, I, I, think, I think we're good now. So, I'm just, uh, Najima, I'm gonna unmute you. It looks like you can't unmute yourself for now, okay? So, I've just unmuted you. Uh, I've just muted you, okay? So, so, I'm hoping that everything is okay now. So, we shouldn't have somebody talking about it now. Actually, I think it was Yusuf. Can you just tell him to? Um, it might have been Yusuf. Okay, so. That's that. Okay, so now that we have that sorted, let us now move towards what we mean by project management and let us move towards what we mean by business analysis. But before I do that, do you have any questions for me? And please, no question is stupid. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, only the people who don't ask questions are the people that don't learn. So if you have a question for me, feel free to just ask me that question and then I'll answer that question right away. So any questions, guys? Anybody? No? Everybody okay? Okay, if you don't have any questions, just do the normal thing you do, which is carry on. I only need a few people to say carry on, and then I will carry on. So normally, I just need three people to say carry on, and then I will carry on. So let me know I can carry on, guys. Okay, good. One person, so we need one more person. Okay, I just, sorry, I need one person now. So three people. So far, I have two. Good. All right, so now I can carry on. So I'm going to open up another presentation for you. Uh, this presentation is very much what we use to do, um, to train in project management. And then I'll get that open for you now. So just bear with me a second and while I open that up. So that's the DBT framework and uh, this is it. Now, I would actually take you through the PRINCE2 methodology. I'll take you through the Agile methodology. I'll do it as quickly as possible. Obviously, it will be... I won't do it as quickly as possible. I would actually just take my time explaining to you, but the good news is that you would actually understand how it works. Okay, that's the most important thing. So let us now move towards managing projects. Now, what is a project? And this is where you need to come back on YouTube. So I want to put things on the, on the board for you. Okay, so let's be quickly come here. Turn it, just turn it, that's all you need to do. Okay, good, thank you very much. So we're going on YouTube, good. Now, now that we're on YouTube, here you go. I'm going to show you the presentation, all right? So don't worry too much. I'm going to show you the presentation, but I think it's very important that you understand. Now, just to be clear, I'm going to be looking at the board to see if you have any questions. Uh, oh, there's a question. All right, so please, um, Heather, please ask the question that you have. I can see, look, I can see on the screen. Show them the screen so they can see. So we can see the screen. Okay, uh, so I can see everything that's happening on the screen. So you can type in the screen so I can see it and I can see it on my laptop. But even, and then also you can bring the camera back to myself. Thank you. All right, so please, Heather, you said there's a question. Okay, okay, please ask the question so I can answer it. Uh, I, 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 uh, okay, unfortunately, I won't, see, I won't be able to see the question on YouTube. So just type it here again, please, Heather. Okay, good. 
about computer skills, what are the basics? Okay, good, that's a good question. Now, here's the thing. If you actually don't have the computer skills, there's so much support on our platform that we provide Excel training, we provide PowerPoint training, we even provide what power, what, what Microsoft Word, uh, Word training. Because the thing about our platform is you have to do the work. So if you don't know how to do the work, we will have to actually train you to gain the computer skills required for you to be able to do the work. So don't worry, in terms of computer skills, you will have all that support here. Okay, so don't worry about that. I hope that answers that question, uh, Heather. So the only way I can know is by you giving me an answer on there, so I can see. Hi, Ella. Okay, good. Um, my telegram has gone off. Okay, let me see if there's a little question here. So let me now carry on. Okay, good. You're coming from a finance background, but have worked in media etc so understand good all right so that's very good all right now let me come back here so focus on what i'm doing on youtube right now now i'll give you the slide i'm going to use to explain what i'm doing just in case um you don't know you don't understand what i'm doing but let me come here first there we go all right so i'll use this slide first of all so hopefully this should help so that's the slide we're using okay now just think about it in this respect. What is Prince 2? Prince 2 is, is, is defined as projects in a controlled environment. Although the manual has been updated, and I think most of you will be aware of that, uh, and the reason it needs to be updated is because we kind of operate in an agile environment these days. And what do we mean by agile? Well, the ability for us to do things in bits and bobs, not just try, not just wait eight months to launch a big system, only to realize that technology has changed, times has changed, users' perception, market acceptability has changed, and all of a sudden nobody wants the system again. It is better for us to build one small part. The most, the minimum viable product, the minimum thing you need to do that the customer wants, or what the customer needs, and then you can build on that over time. So we build in little bits, yeah, in little chunks, and then deliver on an incremental basis. So what's the most important thing we need to do? Let us do that first. Maybe this is what we need to build. So imagine we need to build this. Okay, that's what we need to build for the cost. We need to build this for these customers, maybe times one million customers, okay? Now, it's gonna take us three years to build all of this. Well, if we wait three years to deliver this, somebody else might come and deliver something better, or maybe the customer might literally outgrow what you need, or technology can change. So we can't wait three years. So why don't we break this into little chunks, like so? Okay, let's break the deliverables into little chunks. And let us say that this deliverable 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, let's just say that in order for us to at least give the customer the most important things that they need, 1 to 3 will be perfect. So, we will now sprint. Analyze, okay, and let me even do it this way. Analyze, design, develop, test, deploy, and we have just one little bit of the entire system working, and this customer is beginning to use it. He's very happy. He's like, oh, this is good, this is good, but then he gives you feedback. He says, well, actually, you know what? Could it be in this way? Could it actually do that? Okay, can you make changes? And you take that feedback and changes, and you look at the next set of things that need to be done. You prioritize based on those feedback and changes. Maybe this one, now maybe you bring three back here and update three plus four. Maybe you decide that five won't happen here, five will happen here. And then maybe actually realize that maybe nine needs to come at this point in time. And by the way, also 11 needs to come at this point in time. And then you then have five, so you then have six and seven down here. And then you now go ahead and then you analyze, design, develop, test, deploy, and then you now have the initial product plus this new product, and now the customer is much, much happier. He's using it, and he's giving you more feedback. So you repeat that process over and over again until you end up with a, the working software, the completed one that you wanted, Okay, it might even be less, or you might even realize that you don't even need this bit anymore. We can stop here. 
Okay, so now the customer is actually having a software that he actually wants to use. This methodology is called the Agile methodology. And what happened was with the company's methodology, what happened was that companies realized that this, if this method is extremely efficient, especially when it comes to rolling out digital products. And you know that a customer is using that digital product, you can get feedback from that customer straight away. As a result of it, people started using the agile methodology compared to obviously other methodologies. But does that now make the older, older methodologies useless? Oh, hell no. It doesn't make the older <laughs> so it doesn't make the older methodologies useless. What does it do? Well, let's do this. So that's the agile methodology. What does it do? Well, let's think about it. The principle methodology looking at that screen is broken down into principles, processes, and themes. Okay, so look at that screen. Don't worry, you can see that on the home screen, so you can come back over here. So, this two methodology is broken down into principles, processes, and themes. What are the principles? Well, I always tell people that everybody is pretty too qualified, and a lot of people think, nah, yeah, right, KG, what do you mean everybody is pretty too qualified? That's not possible. What's up? Okay, we can get charged. And people say to me, yeah, right, KG, what do you mean? that um, um, everyone's basically qualified, that's not possible. Well, I'll say, well, let's think about it. Let's look at the principles. If you live by certain principles, then you obviously uh, are, you represent that, whatever that thing stands for. So, first question, and I'm gonna throw questions at you. And um, I'm gonna look at the question um, telegram to see how you answer them. Do you do things without having a justifiable reason to do them? If you do, please let me know, and I'll look it down the screen. If you don't, also please let me know. So if you, exactly, so yeah, Roland said no. So can I confirm that everybody else does things without just viable reason? No, no, everybody must have a just viable reason for doing things, doing things, something. So that automatically means that you are a prince to practitioner. It's just that simple, okay? That, because you're already living by one place. At least we know that you're partly a prince to practitioner because you're already living by one place, right? Okay, so, well, Cheese, uh, cheese nonzo, okay, sometimes, but when you do things without having a justifiable reason, do you sometimes get burnt? And if you sometimes get burnt as a result of doing things without having a justifiable reason, do you learn from it? Because I'm gonna go somewhere with I'm gonna go somewhere with that. And do you then repeat it again? Think about that, okay? So let us move on to the next principle, if you don't mind. And every single time, and I like what Shinozo just said, he said sometimes you do. Now, when you do and you get burnt. And think about this, when you do and you get burnt, do you, and this is an important question, do you learn from your experience and tend not to do it again? And if you do do it again, do you still learn from that experience and then obviously not do it again? Is that something that you do? If it is something that you do, I would like to know, okay? Please let me know, okay? You learn, okay? Uh, okay, so yes, so once again, you are confirming to me that you are a practitioner. All right, let's see, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just a few things. Uh, whenever you are given a task to do and you have three or four people that are reporting to you and you want that task to be done um, uh, correctly, do you tend to define roles and responsibilities for everybody? Do you feel that when people have a role and responsibility, when someone is accountable, when somebody is uh, informing you, when somebody is consulting you, when somebody is um, responsible, do you feel that, do you feel more comfortable that the job will get done? So once again, let's see, let's see what answers you are giving me. Okay? So, um, yes, okay, good. So you do feel that, you feel that, okay, good. Once again, you're living by principles that Makes you a prince to practitioner. Well, let's go back to the next one. Are you the kind of person that likes to do things in stages? You don't like to just rush. And I really like, notice that sometimes when you rush things, you tend to make mistakes. So it's better to break things down into stages. Get one thing done before you move to the next thing. So for example, imagine you were single and someone came up to you and said, Oh, I had a vision that you're my wife. Or I had a vision that you're my husband. Do you get up and marry that person? Or do you go through stages of dating and courting and then realizing you fall in love with that person before you marry? Go on. Let's see what you have to say. 
so once again, we're trying to confirm if you are a practitioner. Okay, once again, everyone is agreeing. Yes, all right. Okay, well, when things don't go according to plan, do you tear the entire world down and say that's it? Or do you understand that well, things don't always go according to plan, so you almost always make room for exceptions? Is that who you are? If you are, just type, I make, just type exception. Just type exception. So I can know. Type exception, please. Once again, I'm looking at Telegram. That's the only way I can know that you are following what I'm doing. So just type exception, okay? And then I'll know that you're following what I'm doing. Okay, good. So once again, it looks as if we're getting close, guys. We're getting close. Now, the last thing is, whenever you are planning something, are you more involved in... Are you more focused on the end result of what you are planning or are you more focused on the whole process and the whole um, technologies you have to use or is your ultimate goal that this thing must deliver what I want it to deliver? Okay, once again, let's see if you have, if you're more focused on the product, end result, okay, good, focus on the end result, okay, so Okay, when you focus, when you look at the whole process, do you care about the end result? What's more important, the process or the end result? I think that's the question I should have asked. What's more important, the process or the end result? Okay, and that's for you, Josephine. So, uh, because Josephine said the whole process, so we want to find out what's more important to Josephine, the end result? Okay, <laughs> all right, so the end result, exactly. So once again, <laughs> the last thing, tailor to suit your project environment. How many times have you been told that this is the way you should do something, but you find out along the way that, yeah, this is the way you should do it. However, because what you are doing requires you to be flexible and adapt to what it is that you are doing, you tend to, you tend to understand what it's used for, but you make it adaptable and flexible to what you, what, in order for you to complete what you have done. I don't know if you can give me an example. Can someone give an example of when that has happened to them, where this is what you are told to do, but you have to be adaptable and flexible in order to get it job done. Because if you have followed it exactly as it had been said, it will not have been achieved. Has that ever happened to you? Anybody? Has that ever happened to you? Okay, flexible and adaptable. Uh, okay, good, flexible and adaptable. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We've just gone through all the two principles, and you have just confirmed that that is who you are, which automatically makes you makes it obvious that you live by these principles, which makes you partly a practice to practitioner. Now let us go to the other thing that people are now talking about in the group. I'm looking at that. They're saying a good process leads to positive results. Absolutely yes, and that is why Prince Two has what you call process. Prince Two says that look, guess what? We are we don't we don't need to just get on with things without actually knowing where we are starting and where we are finishing. Prince 2 says that before we actually even get started, let us start it up. Let us discuss the idea. Let us discuss if this thing is even worth considering. Now that we've discussed how uh, it's worth considering, let us initiate the process. Let us look at the business case for this thing. Is it a justifiable business case based on the budget, timeline, and resources? Is it worth going ahead with it? Yes. Okay, good. It's a viable business model. Well, instead of us going ahead, instead of us going out to implement it, before we do that, let us plan. Let's assemble the right team and let us put control measures in place so that we can control the life cycle of this project. By doing that, and we get approval for that, we can now move to the next stage where at least we can implement it. Now, once we have implemented it and it is successful and we've tested it and deployed it, then we can only then can we close the project. So Pistu says that you must have a process of doing something. And that process, according to Pistu's principle, says ultimately, as you are focusing on that process, as you are going through that process, always focus on the end results because there's no point going through a process being obsessed with the process only to end up with what you don't want so always make sure that it's always based on a justifiable business case but look at what i just did here the prince 2 process is actually clearly defined there 
starting up the project, initiating the project. They actually have controlling the stage. But to help you understand, I said plan, assemble, and control. Then they have managing the product delivery. Now, the managing of product delivery, actually, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Imagine I had to build an application. First, I must analyze it. Then, I must design it. Then, I must develop it. Then, test it. And then, deploy it. Okay? And only then can I close that project. That means I must manage the product delivery of analyze, manage the product delivery of design, manage the product delivery of develop, manage the product delivery of test, and manage the product delivery of deploy for me to close it. So Prince 2 doesn't know the stages for implementation for your project. So they just said, guess what? Manage product delivery. Whatever your project is, break it down into stages and manage the product delivery. And then the last thing is I close the project. Now, if you notice, the big, um, one thing that I missed out here is directing the project from the beginning to end. Because somebody needs to be directing that project. Somebody needs to say, confirm that we have achieved this before you go to the next stage. Confirm that this one is okay before you go to the next stage. And that, ladies and gentlemen, gives you the Prince 2 methodology. But guess what? I didn't use all of the terminologies. Why? Because I had to go back to the principle and tailor to suit the environment that I am in. No different from what you do in your life. And then the last thing are the themes. What are the themes? Well, themes are things that you need to continually address throughout the life cycle of the project. Throughout the life cycle of the project, you have to continually address it. Now, I want you to confirm with me if we shouldn't address these areas. If you, if you think we should address it, click at, um, type address. If you think we shouldn't address it, say no. Now, should we continually address the business case? Should we continually review the business case at each stage of the project to make sure there's still value in what we are doing? Yes or no? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Do you think that the organization structure during startup will change? During initiation will change. During plan and control will change. During implement and change will change. For example, the people that are starting it up might just be the client and the key stakeholders. And at initiation might be the project manager, maybe early stage BA comes into place, and then the, um, the PMO office and stuff like that. But when it comes to plan, assembly and control, very much heavy the PM. When it comes to implementation, you then have the design team, the technical team, and all these people. But these days, everyone is kind of involved at an early stage. So, do you agree that organization structure is something you should continually address throughout the life cycle of the project? Once again, let me know. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, okay, talk to me. Tell me what you don't think so. All right. So, let's really go through it. Tell me. Expand and we'll go through it. I'm not going to go anywhere until there's a general consensus on what we are saying. So, come on, uh, okay, please talk to me. Looking at the screen waiting. Okay, while we're waiting for Okwe, let us quickly um, okay, I'll just wait for him to type and then we can move on. Alright, while we're waiting for Okwe, I'll just move on to the next one and then when you finish right now, I'll come back to that. Then the other area is plan. Do we believe that plans change? Do we believe that the plan we make today is not always the same plan tomorrow? And most of the time, because external factors and internal factors can change it, it's like you plan to be somewhere by a particular time, and then all of a sudden there's a lot of traffic, traffic you weren't expecting, and those there's any changes, issues, risk that affect these things. So do you understand that a plan is an area you need to address throughout the life cycle of the project? If you think so, let me know. Okay? Good. That's good. Okay? Good, 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 good. Very good. Okay, so that's good. So let me explain to you what you just said. Yes, the PMO office would be there because it's a project management office. But throughout the life cycle of the project, we must continue to address the organization structure. Why? Because they tend to change as we move from stage to stage. We're not saying that the organization structure is going to disappear for life. 
We're saying that throughout the stages of the project, it needs to be addressed. And guess what? A project is the purpose of creating one or more. A, a project is a temporary organization for the purpose of creating one or more business um, uh, products according to a specified business case. That is the definition of a project. It is recently that we now have permanent PMO office. Once upon a time, once a project is done, they disperse. Once upon a time. But these days, we now have permanent PMO office because you now have continuous improvement, continuous deployment of solutions. I hope it makes sense. But throughout the life cycle, you do have to address those things. Now, risk. Do you agree with me that, and okay, if you understand, please let me know. Risk. Do you agree with me that what is a risk today could not be a risk tomorrow? And what is a risk tomorrow could not, uh, what is not a risk today could be a risk tomorrow. For example, I can hire a project manager to do this job, trust him to get the job done, but all of a sudden, halfway through, he gets offered a better job. Well, initially, me not having the project manager to do the job wasn't a risk, but halfway through, he's handed in his notice. So what does that mean? It's now a risk to the project. Or, initially, the budget for the project was perfectly okay, it was not a risk, but something external happened, or maybe the client increased their demand, uh, their, their requirement, and now we're going to go over budget, that is a potential risk. So do you understand why risk is something that you need to address throughout the life cycle of the project? Even if you have identified and mitigated them, you still need to continually address them. Good. Confirm please, guys. Good, so someone confirms that. Then the next thing is change. Well, guess what? If you understand clients and you yourself are a client, you realize that you're constantly changing your mind. What you say today can change tomorrow. And it's sometimes not their fault. You have clients that are spontaneous, but you also have clients that literally, I can pay to have an e-commerce site built for me. Only for me to realize that my investors have reduced the budget that was allocated to me. So I have to remove certain features that I've already signed up for. That's a change. I can agree that I will have X amount of features on the application, only for me to realize my clients have demanded more features and I have to add it onto it. That is a change. And that will be addressed throughout the life cycle of the project. But one last thing which you need to look at is progress. Progress is something you need to address all the time. And can somebody tell me why? Somebody just give me an example of why they think progress is something you should address all the time. Somebody? Progress, why is this something we should address all the time? Come on guys, help me out here. Okay? To track milestones, wonderful. Okay, to check where we are exactly. And I'll tell you the reason why. Guess what? We can be on time, on track to complete the project today. But based on certain changes of certain unforeseen circumstances, next month we could be behind, <laughs> behind schedule. Or the following week we can be ahead of schedule. Because there are external factors and internal factors that affect the project that we must monitor the project, uh, progress of the project every single time. So ladies and gentlemen, if you understand everything I've said, and everything I've said today is something that you do on a daily basis anyway, then actually you are Prince 2 practitioners. But what is Prince 2? Prince 2 is a best practice solution to managing projects, which means that we have analyzed and studied people who have managed projects successfully, and we are taking best practice from them and giving you a manual for best practice. So it also means that it's something that you yourself have been doing. What you now need to know is understand it as a methodology, but more importantly, understand that actually all you need to do is now understand the terminologies, the processes which I've explained to you, the themes that need to be addressed every throughout the life cycle of the project, and the principles you need to live by, and that makes you a project manager. The rest of what you need right now is getting your hands dirty. Now, does this sound a bit too easy that you're thinking, hold up a second, KG, it can't be that easy. Please confirm for me quickly. Are you thinking, nah, it can't be that easy, KG? Nah, 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 it's not possible. It can't be that easy. Are you thinking that by any chance?
Yes. So that is where you now come here. This is where we now break down the entire, like for example, the templates you use, the, um, the, the terminologies we use within the industry. So you understand have that industry knowledge, how we manage digital projects. That's when you now come on board and we now help you to get your hands dirty and learn from there. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. I'm hoping it makes sense, okay, good. So if that makes sense, okay, then th that, that's, that's the reason why you're here, that's the reason why you're calling. <laughs> okay, so, and, and hopefully that, that, yeah, okay, good, so it makes sense. So now that we've said that, now you can sit down and tell yourself that actually I can do this. Now, and this is something I'm gonna sit down for a second if you don't mind, just focus on the screen. Now, can I, can I ask you guys a question? Just, I've, I've just covered project management. So do you now feel that actually this thing is not rocket science? I can do it. If you can't, just type I can. I feel I can do it. Just please, just type I feel I can do it. So I just I get peace of mind that you understand what I'm saying. I feel I can do it. Is all I want to see. Yeah. I just want to say I feel I can do it. Please. Okay. Good. So only one. Only two people. Three people now feel they can do it. Four people feel they can do it. Five. I'm getting excited. Oh, good. Please, excellent. So I feel good. Thank you so much for letting me know that. And that's the beauty of it. It's not rocket science, guys. It's not. It's pretty easy. And I don't think it's a question of me being a good teacher. I think it's really a question of you realizing that actually this is not rocket science. It's not. It's, 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 it's just like when you bought the book, you probably saw this massive book and you thought to yourself, oh my God, there's no way I can learn this. And all you needed to be, all you needed was for it to be broken down to you. If I'm a good teacher, then you are an excellent, you're an excellent student because you've picked it up, okay? I hope that makes sense, all right? But you have to have a niche area in your industry, yes, and that's where digital comes into place. And that's why I said, you don't need to worry about, but we will teach you the technology. This project management is easy to teach. Business analysis is easy to teach. Do you, know, do you know what's hard? What's hard is the experience. Because when you go for job interviews, they're not going to open the book and say, define what a business case is, or define the principal processes. No, they're going to ask you for real life examples. They're going to ask you tough questions to demonstrate your expertise. And that's why being here will help you achieve that. And I hope that makes sense. And you know what I'm thinking? I think that we shouldn't, I shouldn't do information overload. I think you should digest just the PM side today, and then Sunday we can now break down the BA side. I mean, what do you think about that? So that there's no information overload. Yes, it's just technology that's killing you. Thank you very much, Okay, Just technology, I will not lie to you, 100%. Okay, so, okay, good, so you all agree with, okay, only one person agrees with that. Okay, two people agree with that, good. Anybody else? Okay, good, everyone agrees with that. So the next thing we should do now is for you to go and take your personality test because I want to explain that personality test to you. Now, I believe that a lot of you have created your Career Insights account and if you have, I want you to log into your Career Insights account. So just look at my screen, so you're on the screen. Look at my screen, I'm gonna go to Career Insights now. So, and you should be able to see my screen right now. All right. So if you look at my screen, you will be on Career Insights. I believe that most of you would have been here. Now, if you have already taken your test, because there's no way you'd have ever created an account with us without you creating your test, without you taking your test. So some of you have taken your test before, but I would encourage you to take your test again. Now, I am going to deliberately log out because I'm already logged in. Now, if you're already logged in, please, please, please do not log out. But if you are not logged in, then you need to click on log in. Now remember, it would have asked you for an email. The email you gave to us is what you're going to use to log in. And then it would have asked you to create a password. The password you created is also what you're going to use to log in. Then when you're done, all you need to do is click on log in. Now, if you are a career inside, if you've never set up an account before, which means that you've never been to our website before, then what I will tell you to do is this. What you need to do is go to the website, okay? So now, unfortunately, what I see in the UK is different from what you see in, uh, what I see in Nigeria is different from what you see in the UK because we have different um, pages for everyone. So you would have a button that says, start my free trial. Okay, you will have that button that says start my free trial on the home page. Click on start my free trial and then create an account. <clears throat> and then it will take you to take your test. That is if you have never created an account. If you have created an account, 
what you do need to do is come back onto the site log in remember what i told you before click on the login top right hand area and when you log in scroll all the way down to this section over here okay where you have your personality test and then what you can do is click on view and then you can take your personality test all over again now the reason being is because you will give me your results and then i will analyze your results for you so you should be on this page so i'm just going to go back very very quickly okay and stay on this page over here once you're logged in you need need to scroll down so remember you're logged in you need to scroll down click on the BA and PM personality test click on view when you click on view you will get onto this screen and this screen over here tells you that you can get started by taking your test now I will just log out again and demonstrate it to you all over again okay so remember if you have if you are on this call most like most likely you have created an account so you click on login when you click on login, enter the email you gave us when you created the account, enter the password, and then once you've done that, click on login. The password will be the password you were told to create, and then you should be able to log in. And once you're logged in, you will then access the, um, you will be taken to the dashboard. Now, when you're on that dashboard, scroll all the way down over here, and then click on view, okay? Now, when you click on view, then it should take you to the place where you can take your test. For those of you that are newbies, then you can take a test. For those of you that are newbies, um, remember, all you have to do is click, go to the home page. You won't see this, you will see something else, but you will see an orange button that says start my seven day free trial. Click on that and then start your seven day free trial. I hope that makes sense to everybody. And I'll come to the question area and try and see if I can answer any questions that you have. Now, if you have taken your results several times, um, just what you just need to do is give me your results. So it will say, so you've got to give it to me in this way. So your general and broad skills, and then you will give me percentage. So say for example, 70% BA, 20% uh, PM, and 10% um, uh, PMO. That would be a general on board, um, 10% PMO, and then this will be 20%, okay? And then for your specialist skills, all you have to do is type in specialist, Another specialist, whatever that title, it will be title and then percentage and the next title and then percentage. And then when you do that, I will analyze your skill for you. So please, Okwe, it is that's not the right area. So Okwe, you need to give me your specialist skills. So you need you must be on this page. This is the page you will be on to take your test. And then you click on get started. Okay. And then you scroll down here, click on find out. And then you can now take your test. So that's what you should be doing. Remember what I told you earlier? You should go to, um, let me just go back to the dashboard over here, eWork Experience dashboard, because I can't give you results based on what you gave me. So you have to take, do the full test and give me the full breakdown of it, and I can give you your results. So if you look over here, okay, then you now have, what do you have? You have view, click on the, on that BA and PM personality test, click view. Once you have done that, you will now be able to take your test, as you can see like so, and then you can click on get started and then take your test, okay? So that's what I'm asking you to do, then you can give me your results. Once you've done that, I will now have your results and then I can now help you from there. So good, so let me see. Okay, okay, no, I didn't know no one has done that yet. Okay, so you give it to me in this format. So I'm gonna give you five minutes to try and take your test and then hopefully you can now start throwing your results on here. Now the reason why I need this is because when I call each of you individually before Sunday, I want to now have a proper conversation with you about your career path and exactly where you are going so that we can help you because we don't want you to come here and become jack of all trades. We want you to come here and know exactly what you want to achieve and exactly how you are going to achieve it, okay? So can you please do that for me, please? Uh, that's a very important thing and then next week we'll go through the business analysis side of things on sunday we'll go through the business analysis side of things my login details have expired today but i did it once okay now um uh, moyo moyo 
Now, um, Ola, if your login details has expired, all you need to do is just message Moyo and she will give you like three or four days quickly. It's asking for Kanazai's email, cancel it. If it's asking for Kanazai's email, just cancel it. Don't worry about it, just cancel it, okay? Cancel that. Uh, so there are people who are on the call. So please, Ola, go on Telegram and type, um, um, uh, Moyo, please help me reset my account so that she can communicate with you. Um, he needs like three or four days. It's, um, Oh, okay. All right, good. So, um, okay, so don't worry. Um, apparently, she can't do that now. Obviously, she's finished for the day. So, what she will do is, I'll, let me just, let me just actually just message Moyo. She's been adding most of you, and then tell her to reset it, and she'll give you just, she'll give you like three or four days so you can take your test, okay? And then I will then obviously call you to discuss your test results with you, okay? So I hope that will help. I really hope that will help. Because one thing that will be really good is by Sunday, everyone has taken their test. That's very, very important that by Sunday, everyone say, uh, dashboard, if you're on the dashboard, scroll down. Scroll down, remember what I told you, scroll down. If you're on the dashboard, all you need to do is scroll down. Remember what I said? Scroll down and then click on view personal, PM and BA personality test. Uh, click on view. Now, if it's not allowing you go, does it mean that you don't have subscription? If it's telling you don't have subscription, If you say you don't, okay, so if you say that, that means you've run out of subscription. So once again, you need to message Moyo to give you your to give you extra days so you can take your test, so that when I call you, I can now go through your test with you one by one. Okay, my plan is that I will speak to every single one of you, hopefully before Sunday, and then we can go through your test together on Sunday. Okay, okay, good. So don't worry, just just type Moyo, please reset my account, and then she'll look through that and make sure that your accounts are reset before Monday. So it looks as if you can't really do much as a result of people not being able to um, take their test because their account has expired. Okay, apparently, you're already, yeah, that means you already have an account, your account has expired, uh, or you don't remember your login. So if you don't remember your login, just let Moyo know that you don't remember your login because your account already exists, and then she will give you extra days and give you your password. So this is what we'll be doing tomorrow. We're calling all of you tomorrow and then making sure that you can log in and you can take your test in preparation for Sunday, okay? So that's what tomorrow is all going to be about, all right? So expect calls from Moyo tomorrow, guys. Expect calls from Moyo tomorrow. Yeah, no, no, you go to Career Insights, not Digital Bananas. Digital Bananas is the company that you're gonna to use to get your reference. Career Insights is where you go to, where you get your e-work experience, okay? All right, so it seems, it seems that most people need to have their account reset. So we will wait till Sunday, well, at least once everyone has taken their test, I cannot take at least an hour to go through everybody's, I mean, I will call you and go through your results, but it will take an hour to go through the results, what it means and everything on Sunday, uh, which I believe would really help a lot of people. And then once we have done that, then we can now cover the BA side of things, okay? So just type in there, Moyo reset my account. She will look at that first in the morning, call you, and then we'll take it from there, okay? okay? So I think we've spent an hour and a half, but guess what? In that hour and a half, how do you feel? Do you feel that you've learned a lot today? Do you feel that, you know what? Uh, I'll even come on, don't worry, we'll unblock your account, David. Do you, how do you feel? What is 8 p.m.? It's already on the conference call. We put it there for 8 p.m. So if you're on this call, um, you're already booked for Sunday, so you don't need to rejoin. It's already been said to you, you'll be reminded, and we'll, we'll also send, we'll just resend it to you again. But it's the same link that you would use, okay? You'll be reminded. All right, anything, anyone else? Okay, so guys, don't worry, we'll reset your account. So guys, all I need right now is, how do you feel about today? Do you feel that, do you now feel better about today? Do you feel like, okay, I can really do this and I've learned a lot today? Um, tell me, let me know. And on Sunday, I'm back in the UK, so I will actually make a lot of time. I'll probably be on the call from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. so that you can learn a great deal, okay? Excellent, so I'm happy. So it was what's waiting for, wasn't it? Because I know you guys have been waiting to have your session with me, uh, but it's been extremely busy, okay? Okay, now, just bear in mind that you haven't really learned anything. Just remember that you haven't learned anything. What you've got is a clear understanding of what Project Management is all about and what digital is all about. We haven't done PA and we haven't even broken that into PM. But if you can understand what I have just taught you, I promise you that everything else is just as easy. Uh, so don't worry too much about it, okay? 
Wonderful. Okay. All right, guys. So let me say good night. I want you to go and meet your family. Spend time with your family. Okay. So, so that you don't waste the rest of the day. And then on uh, Sunday, we will now have a full uh, evening to ourselves where we can learn and we can all collaborate and we can get involved.